Janmad yasya yato nivyad itaratas charte suavikya swarat. Tene Brahma hirdaya adikavaye muyantiyat surayaha. Tejo vari madam yata bini mayo yatra tri sargo mesha. Dam nasrena sada nirasta kuhokam satyam param di mahi. O oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O oh all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful basis unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes are the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, <laughs> who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravocha paramo nirmatsaranam satam vedyam vastavam atravastu shivadam tapa trayon mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Parir Ishwaraha Sadhya Hridi Avrutyate Tra Kriti Bihi Sususabis Takshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are full and pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization what is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpatoro galitam falam sukumukad amrita dravya samyatam Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Mohor Aho Ratskabu Vibhavukaha O expert and thoughtful men relish Srimad Bhagavatam The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami Therefore this fruit has become even more tasteful Although its nectarine juice is already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana 
Here's the Antak Stohi Badrani. We do not To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures, or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita, is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in, in hearing of him. Nasta presu badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki In this way, in this way, the devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava, kamalova dayas chaye, chete tar anabidam. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of lust and and uh, and, and and avarice. Uh, I'm sorry. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, the material modes of lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso Bhagavat bhakti yogataha Bhagavat Bhagavat tattva vijnanam Mukta sangha sijayate When these impurities are wiped away the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis chityante sarvasamsaya siyante chasya karmani trista evat manishwari thus bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee in Krishna consciousness can one understand the science of God perfectly. I'm, I'm sorry. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Verse Number 38. Sutta Uvacha Abhyatitas Tadatas Mai Stanani Kalaye Dado Dutyam Panam Striya Suna Yatra dharmas cha vidaha, chatur vidaha. <clears throat> Translation by Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Sutta Goswami said, Maharaj Prikshit, thus being petitioned by the personality of Kali, gave him permission to reside in places where gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter were performed. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. The basic principles of irreligiosity, such as pride, prostitution, intoxication, and falsehood, counteract the four principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy and truthfulness. The personality Kali, 
was given permission to live in four places particularly mentioned by the king, namely the place of gambling, the place of prostitution, the place of drinking, and the place of animal slaughter. Shilajiva Goswami directs that drinking against the principles of scriptures such as the Sotra Mani Yagya, association with women outside marriage, and killing animals against the injunctions of scriptures are irreligious. In the Vedas, two different types of injunctions are there for the pravritas, or those who are engaged in material enjoyment, and for the nivritas, for those who are liberated from material bondage. The Vedic injunction for the pravritas is to gradually regulate their activities toward the path of liberation. Therefore, for, tho for those who are in the lowest stage of ignorance and who indulge in wine, women, and flesh, Drinking by performing sutra mani yagya, association of women by, by marriage, and flesh eating by sacrifice are sometimes recommended. Such recommendations in the Vedic literature are meant for a particular class of men and not for all, but because they are injunctions of the Vedas for particular types of persons, such activities by the Pavritas are not considered adharma. One man's food may be poison for others. Similarly, what is recommended for those in the mode of ignorance may be poison for those in the mode of goodness. Srila Jiva Goswami Prabhu, therefore, affirms that recommendations in the scriptures for a certain class of men are never to be considered adharma or irreligious. But such activities are factually adharma, and they are never to be encouraged. The recommendations in the scriptures are not meant for the encouragement of such a dharma, but for regulating the necessary a dharma gradually toward the path of dharma. Following in the footsteps of Maharaj Prikshit, it is the duty of all executive heads of state to see that the principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness, are established in the state, and that the principles of irreligion, namely pride, illicit female association, or prostitution, intoxication and falsity are checked by all association or uh, by all means, I'm sorry. And to make the best use of a bad bargain, the personality Kali may be transferred to places of gambling, drinking, prostitution, and slaughterhouses. If there are any places like that, those who are addicted to these religious habits may be regulated by the injunctions of the scripture. I'm sorry, those who are addicted to these irreligious habits may be regulated by the injunctions may be regulated by the injunctions of the scripture. In no circumstances should they be encouraged by any state. In other words, the state should categorically stop all sorts of gambling, drinking, prostitution, and falsity. The state which wants to eradicate corruption by majority may introduce the principles of religion in the following manner. One, two compulsory fasting days in a month, if not more austerity. Even from the economic point of view, such two fasting days in a month in the state will save tons of food and the system will also act very favorably on the general health of the citizens. Two, there must be compulsory marriage of young boys and girls attaining 24 years of age and 16 years of age, respectively. There is no harm in co-education in schools and colleges, provided the boys and girls are duly married. And in case there is any intimate connections between a male and female student, they should be married properly without illicit relation. The Divorce Act is encouraging prostitution, and this should be abolished. Three. The citizens of the state must give in charity up to 50% of their income for the purpose of creating a spiritual atmosphere in the state or in the human society, both individually and collectively. They should preach the principles of Bhagavatam by, a, by karma yoga, or doing everything for the satisfaction of the Lord. Uh, uh, they should preach the principles of Bhagavatam by A, karma yoga, or doing everything for the satisfaction of the Lord, B, regular hearing of Srimad Bhagavatam from authorized persons or realized souls, C, chanting the glories of the Lord congregationally at home or at places of worship, D, 
rendering all kinds of service to Bhagavat disengaged in preaching Srimad Bhagavatam and E, residing in a place where the atmosphere is saturated with God consciousness. If the state is regulated by the above process, naturally there will be God consciousness everywhere. Gambling of all description, even speculative business enterprise, is considered to be degrading, and when gambling is encouraged in a state, there is complete disappearance of truthfulness. Allowing young boys and girls to remain unmarried more than the above mentioned ages and licensing animal slaughterhouses of all descriptions should be at once prohibited. The flesh eaters may be allowed to take flesh as mentioned in the scriptures and not otherwise. Intoxication of all description, even smoking cigarettes, chewing tobacco, or drinking of tea must be prohibited Srila Prabhupada Patita Bhavan Ikijay. Well, there's some very interesting points here I haven't noticed before, and this is a really important purport. And point one, and it says, the basic principles of irreligiosity, such as pride, prostitution, intoxication, and falsehood, counteract the four principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness. Okay, so we've read that before in this chapter, and that's very good. The personality of Kali was given permission to live in four places particularly mentioned by the king, namely the place of gambling, the place of prostitution, the place of drinking, and the place of animal slaughter. Okay, so if you make the society so tight that none of those places exist, except maybe in far off places like jungles and places like that, then you're actually, then the leader is actually protecting the society. Okay, and if anybody wants to engage in those activities, they have to go into the jungle, to the wild areas, and, and that would be rightfully so. Anyway, but yet there's one point that I never realized before. It says, Srila Jiva Goswami directs the drinking against the principles of scripture such as Sotramani Yajna, association with women outside marriage, and killing animals against the injunctions of scripture are irreligious. So Jiva Goswami says these following things, this Yajna called Sotramani, and associating women outside of marriage and killing animals against the injunction of scripture are irreligious. In the Vedas, two different types of injunctions are there for the pavritas or those who are engaged in material enjoyment and for the nivritas or those who are liberated from material bondage. Now this is the point. This is a very important point. Now, he says... The Vedic injunction for the Pavritas is to gradually regulate their activities toward the path of liberation. Therefore, for those who are in the lowest stage of ignorance and who indulge in wine, women, and flesh, drinking by performing Sotramani Yajna, association of women by marriage, and flesh eating by sacrifices, are sometimes recommended. So this is called Islam. They permit these things, but they regulate them. So this is a very interesting point. They're irreligious activities, because Srila Jiva Goswami directs that drinking against the principles of scriptures, such as Sotramani Yajna, association with women outside marriage and killing animals against the injunctions of scriptures are irreligious. However, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a yagya. Yeah. However, in the Vedas, two different types of injunctions are there for the pavritas or those who are engaged in material enjoyment. Now, wait a minute. He's saying, Sotramani Yagya is also irreligious, Prabhu, although it's a Yagya. But 
Okay, he says such as. Such as means? No, no, it's drinking against the principles of the scriptures, such as Sotramani Yagya. No, no. It, mean, it means Sotramani Yagya, but it's permitted. He's saying it's irreligious, but it's permitted for the lowest class of people. That's what he's saying. That's a fact, but it doesn't say it's Srila Jiva Goswami directs that drinking against the principles of scriptures, such as the Sotramani Yagya, association with women outside marriage and killing animals against the injunctions of scriptures, are irreligious. Three things, three things, not two. Well, um, illicit association. Killing animals. Animal. Yeah, right. and drinking. Yeah, there's three things that are irreligious. Right. Then he says, in the Vedas, two different types of injunctions are there for the parvatas, or those who are engaged in material enjoyment, mm -hmm. and for the nivritas, those who are liberated from material bondage. The Vedic injunction for the Pavritas is to gradually regulate their activities towards the path of liberation. Therefore, for those who are in the lowest stage of ignorance and who indulge in wine, women, and flesh, drinking by performing sotramani yagya, that's wine, association of women by marriage, and flesh eating by sacrifices, are sometimes recommended. That's exactly what Islam is. It permits you to marry not only one woman, you can marry four women if you want. right? And if you're uh, a prophet, you can marry more than four women. right? And also, so, therefore, for those who are in the lowest stage of ignorance and who indulge in wine, women, and flesh, drink by performing sotramani yagya, association of women by marriage, and flesh eating by sacrifices. See, in Islam, you're not allowed to associate with women out of marriage, but you are allowed to have four wives. You see? <coughs> but this is th a type of prostitution. Yeah. Low. low, very low class behavior. But it's regulated, and there is a possibility for the lowest class of people to be allowed to do this as long as they're regulated. And Islam regulates it. If you, if you have sex with someone outside of marriage, they kill you. Not the man, but the woman. They kill the woman. It happens a lot in Saudi Arabia and other places where there's Sharia law. And sometimes they'll kill the man also. It depends on what his position is. Okay? Therefore, the, for those who are in the lowest stage of ignorance and who indulge in wine, women, and flesh, drinking by performing sotramani yagya, association of women by marriage, and flesh eating by sacrifices are sometimes recommended. Such recommendations in the Vedic literature are meant for a particular class of men and not for all. But because they are injunctions of the Vedas for particular types of persons, such activities by the Pavaratas are not considered a dharma. Therefore, Islam is a bona fide religion. But it's a very special case. One man's food may be poison for others. Similarly, what is recommended for those in the mode of ignorance may be poison for those in the mode of goodness. That's the point. It's not recommended people in the mode of goodness. Right? Srila Jiva Goswami Prabhu therefore affirms 
that recommendations in the scriptures for a certain class of men are never to be considered adharma. Prabhupada had an argument with this one Gujarati man that he was, was a very f good friend. They were going on morning walks every day in, uh, in Juhu Beach, and they were having these great discussions. You know, and, and, the, and the Gujarati, he was a doctor. He was always countering Prabhupada and bringing in Mayavad philosophy and things like that. So when Prabhupada said that meeting, meeting is allowed, in the Vedas, but in very special cases. This man said, I don't agree with that. He said, if that's there, I don't agree with it. The Prophet said, you can't say that. It's in the Vedas. He said, no, no, I don't agree. I don't, I don't, you know, he's like fanatical, right? <laughs> but see here it says, Srila Jiva Goswami Prabhu therefore affirms that recommendations in the scriptures for a certain class of men are never to be considered adharma, adharmas. Adharma or irreligious. But such activities are factually adharma. You see? And they are never to be encouraged. The recommendations in the scriptures are not meant for the encouragement of such adharma, but for regulating the necessary adharma gradually toward the path of dharma. That this is amazing. This is like it just shows you that if Krishna consciousness is a big tent. Everybody can fit into that tent, right? It's not permitting sinful activity, but for those people who are hell-bent on sinful activity, considered the lowest class of people, there is a path. There is a path for them also. Not that it should be recommended for everybody. It should only, only recommend for that small class of adamant, crazy sense gratifiers. Designate. Because, yeah, designate this class of people who are bad and uh, what, the, what is actually the religious practice. See, this is where y your French language is your first language and you let it come over into English. Where you say, designate. Yeah. Now, uh, that you're putting in French, you put the accent on the second syllable, desag, mm -hmm. right? But in English, you put it on the first sil syllable, designate. Designate, designate. You see? That's a mistake all French people make. Not all, but a lot. It's, it's not a bad mistake, but I'm just saying it's it's uh, you have to put the emphasis on the first syllable. Go ahead. So your question was those people. What what actually what you recommended for them in in, um, in terms of religion. The lowest class? You're talking about the lowest yeah. class. Well, it's, it's recommended that they follow the rules. So it doesn't say, it doesn't say that you can have sex out of marriage. But, it, but in their religion, you can have four wives. That's, that's equal to prostitution. By the way, it's not only four wives. Wait a minute. You can also, in Islam, make a contract of marrying a woman for one day for 10 days, for one year, or to five years. They even permit that. So it, it's a type of prostitution, you see. But it's regulated. Did you know that? You, you can make a contract with a woman for one day for marriage. <laughs> this is why people, this is why so many actors in Bollywood who are Hindus, they, they convert to Islam but they can legally engage in prostitution. Huh? There's a lot of, a lot of actors in, uh, in Hind India that convert to Islam because they can, you know, not, not all of them just for that reason, but uh, some, definitely. Yeah. Okay, I think we, we don't want to beat this uh, point too much. Following in the footsteps of Maharaj Pariksha, it is the duty of all executive heads of state, states to see that the principles of religion, namely austerity, cleanliness, mercy, and truthfulness, are established in the state, and that the principles of irreligion, namely pride, illicit female association, or prostitution, intoxication, and falsity, are checked by all means. And to make the best use of a bad bargain, the personality of Kali may be transferred to places of gambling, drinking and prostitution, and slaughterhouses. <coughs> 
if there are any places like that, that's the key s statement, if there are any places like that. So if the kingdom is managed properly, there won't be places like that. There will only be places like that in far off areas. However, if you go to Vrindavan, in the Muslim section, there, there, are, there are butchers cutting meat and exposing it in public. You know, the, the, butcher, the butcheries in India are very unclean. They don't follow any cleanliness rules. So you've seen that? No. It's disgusting, right? But it's right in Vrindavan. Yeah, and, but the, peop but the, the Vaishnavas uh, tolerate it. Islam is, in many ways, a bona fide religion. But it's for really the lowest class of people. But it helps them, some of them come up to a, a higher level, you know, especially if they follow all their rules. Okay, then Prabhupada makes this th three uh, compulsory principles. If they're followed, then he says, the three or four, there's four, no, there's three. And then he says that uh, if they follow it, then It'll, it'll bring about Krishna consciousness. In the end, he says, gambling of all description, even speculative business enterprise, is considered to be degrading. There's nothing more degrading than the stock, in bo the stock market. Have you ever seen what goes on on the floor of the stock market? It is complete illusion and lust and greed at its, epif uh, at its, at its top level. And, and, and people are going crazy, right? Whenever the stock market's going down, there's pictures of people like, oh no, you know. <laughs> and then when it's going up, they're, yes, yes, and they're bidding, and you know, it's, it's like passion at, at, on, on uh, uh, steroids, right? So, <laughs> Prabhupada said, this, this is even speculative business enterprises is considered to be degrading, and when gambling is encouraged in the state, there is a complete disappearance of truthfulness. So, like I explained yesterday, before, they were in the, right now, you can drive through Seattle in the city, or Federal Way, or places like that, and you'll see permitted houses of gambling, whereas that was never there before. Even in Washington State, it was never there. You know, and it started with, uh, permitting gambling on Indian reservations because they're not theoretically part of the United States. They don't have to follow the same rules. And then it's spread all over, you know. Okay, so allowing young boys and girls to remain unmarried more than the above mentioned ages, that's 24 for men, 16 for women. Is licensing, uh, uh, let's allowing young boys and girls to remain unmarried more than the above mentioned ages and license, licensing animal slaughterhouses of all descriptions should be at once prohibited. Flesh eaters may be allowed to take flesh as mentioned in the scriptures and not otherwise. Intoxication of all description, even smoking cigarettes, chewing tobacco, or drinking of tea must be prohibited. So you can see. What kind, of Prabhupada, what kind of society Prabhupada was uh, advocating? Right? It's a Krishna conscious society, but with the caveat that it's possible in order to help the most lowest class of people to permit certain things that are irreligious, but at least they're regulated. At least they're regulated. And it gives a chance to, for some of those people to progress spiritually. Okay, are there any questions? I'm going to discuss something else right now, but are there any questions? Uh, why do you say that? I'm telling you, in, in Brindaban, there are Muslims. And in this section, they're eating meat. Well, see, 
as long as they follow their religion. See, Prabhupada said, there's got to be a minister, ministry of religion in the government. And what does the ministry of religion do? It, it oversees that all the people who profess a religion, like Islam or like Christianity, have to follow their rules. Have to follow their rules. And if they break their rules, then the ministry can act. So that means that if, if Krishna consciousness actually took over a country in which there are Mayavadis, there are uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, there are uh, all kinds of different religions, uh, there has to be a ministry of religion to regulate them, to make sure they're following the rules. This is something I was always, uh, and I was thinking about, what would happen if Krishna consciousness took over a country and has an army and has uh, money? What would happen? Well, what would happen is, uh, hopefully, they would not do what's happened in every other a religion that took over a country, that is start persecuting <laughs> the people that they don't like, you know, who are deviating from their religion. So even when Islam took over in some countries, according to Quran, according to Muhammad, you have to protect the people of the Abrahamic uh, tradition. That includes the Christians and the Jews. So he made that rule. You're not allowed to persecute them. Of course, they do, they do get persecuted every once in a while because of fanaticism. But uh, they were living in Islam for for thousands of years, uh, for over 1,400 years. There used to be plenty of Jews and Muslims and uh, Christians living under Muslim rule in the Middle East and in other places, like in some places in Europe and in India. Of course, the Quran doesn't give any special protection for Hindus. So, <laughs> but it does give protection for the Jews and the Christians. So here we see that even, there, there's always this, this uh, what do you call it, the, uh, a special uh, status for other religions, even in Islam. Okay, oh, okay, we'll stop there. This, what I was going to discuss extra, we'll do tomorrow. Any other questions? Srila Prabhupada Kije. It's amazing purport.